start off, I just want to show you around our homepage, which is isoc.epistemonicus.org. Um, and here you can find in the About page um, some useful information, including how to cite ISOC in your publications and reports, and also how different content is licensed within ISOC. In the Browse uh, tab, you can uh, look at uh, projects that have been published to our ISOC database. In the Help tab, you can find um, our, our contact information. If you experience any difficulties, you can uh, provide us with feedback. You can sign up to a drop-in support webinar, which are monthly, and you can have a, a look at our help videos. These are very short to the point sort of how-to videos of, of the key sort of actions that you take in the platform. And they're also signposted throughout the platform. In the What's New tab, you can see uh, what new enhancements have been made. Uh, we release new enhancements regularly based on user feedback, so um, you can keep up to date with those on the, on the What's New tab. And then, of course, you can log in if you have an account or you can create a new account. So once you've logged in, um, the first uh, place you're going to be is in what we call My Workspace. And it's here that you can create a new project. And ISOC guides you to enter in the sort of characteristics of this project, including the title and the authors and uh, the review question. And then once you have that, you can begin uh, sharing this project with your co-reviewers. Uh, so um, all you need to do is insert their email addresses, add, and then determine what, what can they do in ISOC. Can they only view the project or can they also edit the project and invite them? This will generate an email to uh, your co-reviewers, and um, if uh, they don't already have an ISOC account, they'll be prompted to create one. Under users with access, you can manage access, you can change people's access rights, you can remove um, people from the project. And then in temporary sharing, you can manually create uh, and then disable a, a URL for the project. Um, this is not the same as publishing to the ISOC database. This is um, used in, in the stage where the project is still private, uh, but you want to share your project or enable someone to see your project who might not otherwise need an ISOC account. So you don't want to force them to go through the process of, of creating an ISOC account. You can, you can send them a link. Um, okay, if you're sending them a link, they'll only be able to view and not edit. Okay, so let's have a look at this test project. This is a made-up project that I've created for the demo. Um, the first thing you need to do is to follow these four steps. And this is all the groundwork that you're doing to be able to make applying grade circle as smooth as possible. So what you're doing is you're bringing in all the bits of data that you're going to need to refer to when you make those grade circle assessments. And by having them all within ISOC, you're really optimizing its functionality. As already mentioned, you, you um, can begin using ISOC once you've completed the screening process in your review and you have a final list of included studies and you would upload these. So most of the time you, you'll have these sitting in a um, reference management software. Um, for example, here, this is the free version of EndNote. I would group my included studies into a, into a group and then I'd export them uh, from EndNote and this is essential, I need to choose the RIS format. Okay, this is the format that ISOC reads. It doesn't read other formats. So I'm going to uh, save it. And then you'd go in and uh, back into ISOC and import that RIS file. This then will then move you on to uh, step two. But I just want to come back to step one and um, show you what that looks like. So there's 15 references that have been loaded. Um, here they are, and it's really good idea to have a look through your references once they've been imported, because everything in ISOC depends on a, on a successful import of your references. If you see anything odd, um, you know, if you see errors that you want to fix or missing information, those problems usually are, are, are from your reference management software and you can't edit them in ISOC. So you're going to have to go back to your EndNote or your other software, fix it, export it, and re-import uh, your list of included studies into ISOC. Okay, so I'm going to go to step two, which is uh, to bring in the inclusion and the exclusion criteria for the review. I have just have some examples here that I'm going to uh, bring in for the sake of, of this demo. 
again, by this point, you know, you'll, you'll already have this information written somewhere um, because it's what you used um, to determine inclusion and exclusion. And then I go on to step three, which is to create or import your characteristics of studies table. Again, this is, this is normally something we create as part of a systematic review. So this is a table that, you know, has each study and some of the characteristics of those studies, like for example, the country that they're from or the perspectives um, of, of those uh, whose views are being explored, et cetera. And you really have two options. You can create the table directly in ISOC from scratch, or you can import a table. Um, it's really important to remember um, if you're working on a systematic review, the earlier you can use ISOC to some degree, the better, because you can already build these tables in a way that makes them compatible with the ISOC program and will improve the kind of Im import functionality. So if you're importing a table, you have to use our template and you can download our template here. There's nothing terribly fancy about the template. It's just that um, it has the reference number, which is a reference ID. That's a that's an ISOC specific reference ID and the authors in the year. And nothing can change about these two columns. You must not touch them <laughs> and you must begin entering your uh, information from column C onwards. So ideally you're using, you know, you're going to use ISOC, you, you download the template and you begin, you know, creating your table here in the template. Um, if you've already created the table somewhere else, you're going to need to copy and, information, copy and paste your information across. So for example, if I have my characteristics of studies table already somewhere else, um, I'm going to need to copy that information into the table before I import it. Don't try just importing a table. It will lead to all kinds of problems. Um, okay, so I'm going to save it here. And then I go back into ISOC and I choose that file. And then step three is it gives me a little preview of the table so I can have a look, make sure everything's as I expect. If there's anything that's not right here, you got to go back to step one and, and start again. It's possible that you overlooked some of these important um, uh, points that we, that we give you. Okay, and then I'm going to click save. And there we go. There's my characteristics of studies table. And then I can move on to step four, which was which is the methodological assessments table. And again, you're you're creating this as part of the review process anyway. Usually in a systematic review, you're applying a critical appraisal tool to each of your included studies. So um, you can save yourself time by creating them directly in, in ISOC, either by you know, using the manual create table function, determine your number of columns, uh, name those columns, and then when you do so, uh, a, a blank table will be generated and you fill in the information or again you download our template and you begin filling in the information from column C onwards. Imagine that you've you've already got uh, a, a table going for your methodological assessments. You're going to have to copy that data in, into our template okay. and then import it back into ISOC. Great. Have a little look. Make sure it's what I'm expecting to see. Looks good. And I'll save it. <clears throat> now that you've done these four steps, you can then continue into um, the, the, the main kind of heart of, of, the, uh, of the ISOC program. And this is the interactive summary of qualitative findings table. Um, so you begin building this table in ISOC once you have completed your analysis and th synthesis and you have review findings and you move from your full review findings that are written up in, in the body of your manuscript or, or your report and you write summaries for each of your, your review findings. And it's the summaries that you bring into this summary of qualitative findings table. So I prepared a, a couple just as, as an example to give to you. Okay. Um, first, let's say um, some of these review findings are organized around certain themes. I can add groups. Um, so let's say uh, I want to create a group of findings under a certain theme uh, called social isolation. Okay. 
and I want to create another theme called participation in social activities. Okay, I save those. And then when I add a review finding, okay, I'll bring this one in, the first one. I can then assign it to a group. So I can assign it to um, that theme called social isolation. You may or may not have your review findings uh, uh, organized by, by theme or topic, but um, it's, it's quite frequent that that is the case. You'll see that now that I've um, entered a review finding, I'm prompted to assign the review finding its references. So, uh, you know, in your review process, it's important to have that transparency to know, you know, to be able to trace back from your review finding to the supporting studies, okay, to, the, to the studies underlining that review finding. So you would select those, ISOC lists them for you, and you can just tick off the ones that contributed to this review finding. Um, and then here at this stage is when um, the grade circle assessment of confidence um, assessment uh, worksheet becomes available. Okay, so these, uh, these buttons become active. And if you open that up, what you find is an individual worksheet for this one review finding. And there's going to be a worksheet, an individual worksheet for each review finding because grade circle is, is applied to individual review findings. Can't stress that enough. That's often something that, that gets uh, misunderstood. So you're doing a grade circle assessment for each and every single uh, review finding. So what it's showing me here is my evidence profile table, which is a um, is 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 really a guiding framework for applying grade circle. I'm going to assess first each of my grade circle components, so methodological limitations, coherence, adequacy, and relevance, and then make my overall grade circle assessment of confidence. You'll see here that you've got um, a little warning message here. It says data are missing. Click, uh, click link to see what's missing. Well, what's missing is the extracted data. So it's at this stage, at the worksheet stage, that you would bring in the extracted data from the primary studies that underline this review finding. So this is the review finding I'm working on. Okay, now I need to go uh, and get the data from the primary studies from which I developed this review finding. Now you might have done your analysis and synthesis and all sorts of different software, including qualitative data analysis software. So in this example, I'm going to I'm going to just use NVivo. So imagine you know you did your uh, analysis in NVivo, and that review finding came from a code uh, called uh, "Never Alone in Low Income Settings." Okay, within the within the wider theme social isolation. So I would double click that code and I would see all the data chunks that I coded to never alone in lower income settings. And here's my, here are my three studies. So I have to copy and paste this across. This is, this is optional, of course, um, but uh, what it means, if you have it here, you're going to see that it, it makes um, a, it, it much easier to apply the grade circle approach because you, you'll have everything then at your fingertips. Okay, and you won't have to navigate between, let's say, in vivo and ISOC. I guess I'm going to bring in my extracted data for the three studies that support this individual review finding. Okay, and then I should see those warnings disappear, which they have. Okay, there they are. Okay, so I'm ready to begin uh, assessing each of my four grade circle components. And here is where all the work you've done so far pays off. Because when, for example, I click methodological limitations, on the left, I have the guiding uh, question that I'm meant to be thinking about when assessing methodological assessment, uh, methodological limitations. And on the right, ISOC has populated the worksheet with all the data that I need to consider to make that assessment. And, and so what it's done is it's extracted the methodological assessments and the extracted data um, that I've entered for the three studies that support um, this review finding. Okay, so I'm going to be um, looking, um, and, and the reason we show you 
what we show you is what we think you need to consider to assess this, this component. So um, you're going to be looking at your critical appraisals. You're going to be looking for things that um, uh, are a concern vis-a-vis -vis this individual review finding. You might also want to be uh, considering, okay, there's maybe some limitations, but uh, you know, how, um, uh, how important are they with regards to how much uh, this individual review finding is grounded in that study's data or not. These are things that you take into account. Again, ISOC isn't going to teach you how to apply grade circle. You're going to need to refer to the guidance papers and we provide links to those guidance papers here. Okay. But based on this, you're, you're reviewing across this data, you're looking at this, uh, this information, and you need to decide whether you have no or very minor concerns, minor concerns, or moderate concerns, or serious concerns about methodological limitations um, of, the, of the evidence that support this review finding. Okay, so you would make a selection. So for example, let's say I have no or very minor concerns. I can explain those concerns, and then I can uh, save. Okay, and I'm, I'm guided, you know, I'm told, okay, you're making some progress here. So I'd go on and make the assessment for each of the grade circle components. For coherence, uh, the coherence um, component is really looking at the fit between the review finding as we wrote it and the extracted data from those studies. Uh, so if there are, is a, um, if there are exceptions in the data which are not represented in the review finding, for example, that could be a threat to our confidence in the review finding, we would uh, note uh, uh, concerns. So you're looking for concerns and then you're deciding um, what are the degree of those concerns? Are, they, are there none or just very minor ones? Are there minor, are there moderate, are there serious concerns? For minor, moderate, and serious, um, you'll be prompted to uh, explain um, that uh, that assessment, and that's part of the, the sort of transparency uh, of the grade circle approach. If I tried to save without writing uh, an explanation, uh, ISOC will remind me. I can do it now or I can do it later. If I did it later, I'm going to see a warning sign here that, that tells me the explanation is incomplete. Okay? So then um, let's just imagine I go forward in this just to have them completed here adequacy just to say adequacy is about the 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 quantity of of data and the richness of data so what isoc displays for you is the extracted data which gives you a sense of of of, of data richness the characteristics of the of the studies which gives you a sense of how many studies support this review finding how many participants were there how many um interactions or encounters were there with participants um, from the researchers. Uh, and then, of course, we're always considering these in relation to this individual review finding and then deciding um, whether we have concerns and, and what those levels of concerns are. Okay, just for simplicity, I'm going to go through and just say no or very minor. Here for relevance, we're looking at the relevance um, of the underlining data to the, our review question. So, um, we're looking what ISOC displays for you is the review question and the inclusion criteria and the exclusion criteria. This tells you what what your aim was, you know, in the review. What what is it that you were after in the review? Then we show you the characteristics of studies because then that shows you well what did those individual studies set out to do? And you can um, again following our guidance be looking for anything that could be a concern, which might be uh, that there's indirect evidence supporting this review finding, that there's unclear evidence, or that there's maybe partial evidence supporting um, this review finding. And then you would make your assessment, um, um, yeah, in, in association to that. So let's say for simplicity, we're saying no or very minor. When I've completed all four uh, co components, then the grade circle assessment of confidence appears. And then what I'm shown are the assessments I made for each of the uh, individual components. And then I then need to take it as a whole and decide for this review finding, these are the concerns I noted. Um, do these concerns uh, lower my confidence in the review finding? And we always start off with the assumption that a review finding is high confidence, and then we grade down. 
second. So let's say this is a high confidence finding. Um, there's some, uh, some text that we provide as a baseline explanation. An explanation is required uh, for, for um, your grade circle assessment of confidence. And then I would save. Okay. Now, once I've completed this process, it tells me that the assessment has been added to the ISOC. So if I click return to ISOC, I can see it here. And here I've got my, my review finding, the grade circle assessment of confidence and the explanation. Okay. So the next, let's imagine I've, I've got a, you know, a number of review findings and I'm ready to, to um, include these in my publication. You can print or export your summary of qualitative findings and your evidence profiles. And you'll see here that the, that the uh, group that you determine, so for example, the theme becomes a row header and then all of the findings that relate to that theme would be listed underneath. Okay, so we have first our summary of qualitative findings and then our evidence profile table. And uh, this can be printed or saved as a PDF. Okay? And it can be exported uh, to Word. And once it's in Word, then of course it's editable if you want to, you know, change fonts and uh, and improve, um, you know, change anything about the the uh, how it's set out. That's all sort of modifiable. Okay, and lastly, I suppose for today anyway, is um, you can also uh, publish a um, a project to the ISOC database. Let's have a look here. Let's see, we have a publish button. And you can decide whether you want to um, publish your project fully so that all anyone who has accesses the, the um, workspace, uh, sorry, the, the database would be able to see everything. So your ISOC table, your evidence profiles, all those grade circle worksheets, you'd have sort of complete transparency on your uh, grade circle assessment process or lower levels of, of, um, of, of public, so to speak. Okay, so if I say fully public, I'm then going to be prompted to assign the ISOC a Creative Commons license. The default is um, CC um, BY NC no derivatives. So that's by, um, attribution non commercial non derivatives. But it's your choice. You can assign whichever and then, and then save, and then it would be available on uh, the workspace. Okay, and there we go. So I think that's a kind of a good overview of, uh, of ISOC and the features that it provides. And so I hope uh, you found that useful. Okay, lovely. Claire, do we have some questions that have come through? Yes, thanks, Megan. Um, so one question to start off with, um, if you're fixing just one reference, do you have to re-import your whole library? Uh-huh, <clears throat> so fixing, I guess, in terms of you've made a, a, a typo or something. Um, Yes, uh, currently you have to, um, well, no, that's not true. You could you could um, simply export that one reference and bring it in uh, and delete the previous one. So yeah, it is possible to do that. Um, it's, it can be, um, it can be tricky to manage, you know, if you've done that late in the game and you've already got a lot of work done in ISOC, um, users have told us it's quite, um, it's a bit anxiety ridden that process because you're c concerned around um, preserving what the work that you've already done. So having taken into account that um, that feedback as well, we are investigating what it would take to enable users to make small edits to their references within ISOC, but without having to reproduce a reference management software. But yeah, technically that is possible. If that was the case, if that happened, I would I would. Um, I would say don't be shy to reach out as well for some support to do that. Thanks, Megan. Um, a few more questions that have been answered in the chat, but I can just uh, mention them for those of you who aren't looking at the chat. So is the demo video available online? And Dario has pointed out that uh, we'll be making the recording of both the webinar, including the demo video online. There was a question about uh, the use of mixed methods, and I've responded to that in the chat. Uh, and then there was another um, question about uh, the, the methodological limitations table, whether it describes um, included studies. Um, and I've also responded to that in the chat. So 
um, it would be great if 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 my responses or Daria's responses in the chat aren't clear enough. But it'd be great if you could just sort of mention that in the chat and we can raise it. Uh, Dario also has a question here. How do you see the purpose of the ISOC database? Are you able to monitor the entries to the database and check their validity? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, at the moment, we don't have the resources to sort of curate it per se. I'm doing a little bit of that because it's early days and it's feasible for me to do so. Um, what we realized is people are sometimes um, publishing before they've completed the work. Uh, and so we're getting sort of blank projects sometimes up there. So what we're currently working on, and it's almost implemented, is that there will be minimum criteria to be able to publish an ISOC to the database. So, for example, a, re a review author will be required to have a corresponding author, uh, have an email address, uh, have at least one grade uh, one review finding with one fully completed grade circle assessment. So we're putting in some criteria to have a kind of bigger kind of threshold to reach before you can publish to the database. Um, but yeah, it's important that people know that uh, not everything that's published, we as the grade circle coordinating team, we're not vouching that those are correct or good applications of the grade circle approach. And if you're looking for some good examples, we make reference to some and give uh, clear references um, for uh, well-conducted reviews that applied grade circle in that evaluation paper that's available on the grade circle uh, website. Thanks. That's a really important question. And then another question from Priyanka, is this method used for qualitative analysis of quantitative studies? Uh, no, ab no, absolutely not. And in our in our evaluation of the use of grade circle, that was what we called a fundamental flaw. So um, we actually excluded studies from further uh, evaluation if they applied grade circle in a systematic review that included quantitative studies, even if they did a quote unquote a qualitative analysis or a narrative analysis. To apply grade circle, the systematic review needs to be of studies that are qualitative. And by qualitative, we mean a study that uses qualitative methods for data collection, okay, we're talking interviews, participant observation, drawings, whatever the qualitative methods are, not surveys, okay, not, 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 um, you know, closed-ended Likert scale surveys, and apply a qualitative approach to data analysis. And I could add there that uh, one of the problems we've been facing, I think, is a confusion around the term qualitative analysis that's used in quantitative reviews. And I think more and more people are moving over to calling that narrative or descriptive analysis to avoid that confusion. Mm 